I think the clinical application of genomics uh, in Waldenstrom's uh, is going to be a very exciting one. We published last year in the JCO a guideline for being able to utilize uh, genomics to make informed and individualized treatment decisions for patients. Keeping in mind that what we've learned so far is that being mid-88 mutated, which is what you see in 95 to 97% of patients, actually gives a good forecast that patients are going to be responsive to BTK inhibitors. But also, if you take into account that CXCR4 mutation status uh, is important, CXCR4 mutations occur in about 30 to 40% of all Waldenstrom's patients, this can actually affect um, both time to major response uh, and depth of response. And this, I think, is very important when you consider that you might have patients that you know need a therapy that's going to be uh, impactful very, very quickly. The immediate wild type patients continue to be a challenge. Uh, we know that these patients um, have shorter uh, overall survival. We know now that um, most of the genomics associated with this particular uh, variant of Waldenstrom's tend to be NF kappa B activating mutations, which are below BTK. And many of these mutations actually overlap with what we see in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, which may explain, in fact, why these patients are at higher risk of transformation and that uh, their overall survival uh, is limited. So I think as we look ahead, genomics and the ability to utilize, particularly mediated and CXR report, are going to define the way we uh, individualize hypothermic therapy for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia.